back to my tribute. A man died recently named George Romero. Uh, those of you who are familiar with zombie films from the past 50 years know that he started the whole ball rolling. He is the father of the modern zombie film. Without George Romero, there would not be a Walking Dead that has become such a popular series on TV the past few years. George Romero started the whole ball rolling in 1968 with his small, independently financed uh, film, which he had a hard time distributing. He had almost to be a one-man distribution operation. The iconic Night of the Living Dead. George Romero did that back in 1968. It became a drive-in cult classic. Wrecked in a couple of million within a very short span of time. I believe, if my figures are correct, he did the whole thing on about 100000 possibly a little more. Definitely a very, very limited budget production-wise. But it became a cult classic, and it remains that today. A few years later, well, a decade later, I should say, uh, the 1979 release of Dawn of the Dead. I'm one of the, the fortunate people who got to see it on the big screen, Downtown Theater, Elm Street, Majestic Theater, Dallas, Texas. Uh, and I saw Dawn of the Dead uh, on, of all days, July 4th, 1979, after having gone down to the Texas School Book Depository in what was then a museum, not nearly the museum that it is now. Uh, it's, you know, a big, nice uh, JFK assassination museum now, but, but at that time it was a much smaller operation, but they did have a presentation uh, about the JFK assassination and uh, a replica or a copy of the Mammoth Kirk Arcano rifle, which uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was alleged to have used in the assassination of JFK. Anyway, I got to see all that, and then a few minutes later, a friend and I walked from the Texas School Book Depository down to the Majestic Theater on Elm, where we went in and saw, on the big screen, Dawn of the Dead which is the second in Romero's series of, of zombie films, and definitely uh, impacted me enormously and has continued to be a lasting influence on me in terms of uh, filmmaking, inspiration, uh, cinematography, cin- cinematographically. Wow, what a big word. Anyway, it's been a, a filmmaker's dream, uh, an inspiration for me, and I've seen Dawn of the Dead countless times. Uh, me and a group of friends used to go to midnight movies in Dallas and see it. Uh, Spring Valley and Coit over in Richardson, there was a movie theater and a shopping center there that had midnight showing for Dawn of the Dead. And then, of course, when it came out on VHS, on video, of course, I had got a copy immediately, and we would have group parties where we would watch Dawn of the Dead. And even today, that original Dawn of the Dead from 1979 is vastly superior to the sequel that was done uh, back in the 2000s, which I was not impressed with. I mean, zombies do not run. Come on, what's with that? Uh, the third movie in George Romero's uh, zombie series was Day of the Dead. It did not do as well at the box office as the others, and so it is lesser known. Uh, it is an important installment in the series, however, so got to give it credit, and it's very well done, good special effects, Day of the Dead. Then after that... Uh, I believe the fourth entry, which he waited a few years to do, is Land of the Dead, uh, which is the big kahuna. It has uh, John Leguizamo in it. It has Dennis Hopper in it. He was using a much larger budget on that one. You know, several million are involved in that. Uh, Still fabulous uh, production values. Of course, all of George Romero's work has fantastic production values. And we're going to miss you, George. We miss you, George Romero. Once again, a shout-out to this icon and this great director. And along about that same time, maybe within a year or two afterwards, he did Diary of the Dead. And it's done uh, with more of the handheld camera style that you may be familiar with from Blair Witch and with a few others. Diary of the Dead, not quite up there with the others. Not bad, though. Definitely worth seeing. Anything Romero does is worth seeing. And then Survival of the Dead, uh, which in many ways is one of the most interesting of, of the series. Uh, and I believe Survival of the Dead was Romero's last entry in the series. So that's our, our shout-out to George Romero. But, uh, uh, I like anything that's action-adventure. Uh, my favorite all-time has to be 
the original Dawn of the Dead, where they land in a mall for surviving humans. They're fighting the zombies. You're trying to invade the mall. Then a motorcycle gang shows up. This is uh, George Romero's second installment in his fabulous series of zombie movies. They started the whole Living Dead series, the whole zombie thing that's been going on now for 40 years. George Romero, first with Night of the Living Dead and then with the follow-up Dawn of the Dead. Now, there is the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Don't care for it. Definitely prefer the original. And again, Dawn of the this Dead. This is a shout-out to independent filmmakers, independent filmmakers in general, yeah, of which I am one, and of which my series I alluded to, there's actually four different series. The one that, that has been the, the longest and that has the most episode right now, most episodes, most number of episodes, is the one that I'm in the 25th season now, season 25, and that is Crazy Insane Radio, the series. And I just shot uh, episode 508 and 509 the past couple of days. But you want to go back to season one and watch it all the way through. Now, there are a number of characters that occur in all the different seasons. And, you know, just like in any other series, there's going to be a, a character or two killed off here and there, and there's going to be new characters introduced and various uh, relationships and interactions between the different characters explored. And, uh, you know, I could definitely do rest and go on and on about Crazy Insane Radio and have in a number of interviews, which are also available there on YouTube, and uh, the director's commentary and what have you. And I do have these on DVD for anyone who wants to purchase them. Send a check or money order, 995 to 218 Bonham Street. And... Uh, I will send you the 218 Bottom Street, Paris, Texas, 75460, and you can receive each series for 995 per DVD. So there's 25 DVDs total if you were to buy all 25 seasons. But uh, you can buy any or all seasons that you, you would like and, and follow it. You can also go on YouTube to get a taste of it, to watch it, sample it, watch as many as you want of all the different seasons there on YouTube as well. One of the other series that I've done that has only in the second season right now is a futuristic space series called The Future Hope. It does contain some of the characters from Crazy Insane Radio, so it's a spinoff. Another spinoff that's set in the same city is Crazy Insane Radio, of course, is Murgatroyd After Dark, which follows a lot of the different characters in the series. And the other one is Murgatroyd, The Early Years. Now, I really like Murgatroyd, The Early Years, because I went back and I took a look at a lot of the different characters and showed what they were doing before the main events, the main plot, and the main action in Crazy Inside Radio. So you could call Murgatroyd, The Early Years, a prequel. Uh, That is what it is. Uh, a Standing in my way. I am not one of those weak, puny, defenseless human females that you like to cut to pieces. Raging fire at Drifty's Hamburger Restaurant and yet another blaze at the Super Deluxe Social Hotel.